So what we're doing here is quite unique. We have secondary school and its feeder primary schools working together to really bring about a genuine understanding of the language we use in primary and in secondary to ensure our children get a really smooth transition in their scientific experiences, really allowing them to become really good scientists. It's been very interesting seeing what the, the links are co you know, commonly now uh, and then being able to develop um, practice for us and for the high school so that we're using the same language so the children have got a really good understanding of that language as soon as they move up to high school. So it's a really, really lovely model where we've got that sort of collaborative um, effort going on where the primary teachers are supporting the secondary teachers in their understanding of what happens in the primary curriculum and equally the secondary teachers are supporting with the subject knowledge and where the children go to after Key Stage 2. So over time what we're really looking for is to build up those relationships between the primary schools within this local area, so sharing resources, sharing expertise and just being able to have somewhere where you can go if you have a question, no matter what that question is. By working together, primary science teachers and secondary science teachers have a clarity and an understanding of the scientific curriculum. They can work together to look at scientific inquiry skills and take this knowledge and enhance it within the classroom. We are seeing at our school an improvement in the quality of the science curriculum. We are seeing the pupils achieving and wanting to go on to develop STEM based subjects. If we can share that and ensure that pupils are coming from primary school with the same knowledge and understanding, then the future is bright. It's been really helpful to work as part of a cluster so that we've got, we can share ideas with the schools and um, we can work together with people who wouldn't normally get a chance to work with. Collaborating with these primary school teachers have given me an insight into what prior scientific knowledge our new Year 7s will have when starting. When reflecting on my own practice, I've realised that lots of our new starters will already have a good understanding of some core science content. This makes me question if my lessons present enough of a challenge to them. All sessions are deliberately interactive and involve the primary and the secondary staff being involved in lots of practical activity as well as discussion. This has been based around the best boat requirements of the group previously decided at the start of the session. Um, currently we're making lots of different rocket mice um, to do with how we can pr um, track the questions we work in scientifically in primary schools. So this is something I'd take back and that every each class could do and plan how they would look at the working scientifically aspect of their year group and what they could plan into that so that it shows progression from early years right the way through to year six. All too frequently pupils uh, in year seven and eight actually repeat the work that they've done already in primary school and I believe that's a significant reason for the dip in progress and attainment and why some young people who are in year seven and eight in secondary schools can actually say that they find the work boring, they've done it twice. So what we're doing here at Abraham Moss is we're trying to work a little bit more closely with our primary colleagues, asking them to share with us their Key Stage 2 programmes of study so we can map what young people have done prior to coming to the secondary phase so that we're not actually repeating the work and the progress that they've made in primary school. What we're actually doing is saying, well, this is their starting point in secondary. They've already done this work. We don't need to repeat it. Looking at how we can make sure that we are working with the, the secondary schools, making sure that we've got all the key skills and knowledge that they're going to transfer. But I think also from a secondary school point of view, making sure that our pupils hopefully aren't due duplicating too much, that they're not losing any time repeating things that we've already taught and that everything's built upon and extended further. We have been able to establish really effective working relationships with all the primary schools that signed up. The uptake was fabulous. Our primary colleagues have been able to come in and share with us the different types of inquiry that they carry out in the primary setting and they're really big on the inquiry-based learning which is something that we tend to steer away from. So it's been really, really good for us to get that input from them so we can then readdress how we're delivering our investigation and our practical work when children join us in Year 7. 
For too long, secondary school teachers have assumed that the knowledge and experience that was gained at primary school cannot be transferred into the secondary classroom. It actually is a two-way process. Not only are we preparing our children for when they come into secondary school with the right vocabulary and also with all hands-on experience that we can provide them, it actually works the other way around as well with the, sec uh, with the secondary colleagues hopefully being able to pick up some of the things that we do in the primary schools and then know where our children are coming from, how we've developed their scientific knowledge and maybe use some of the things that we do in our primary lessons in their science lessons in secondary. I think it's really really important that we are secure in our understanding of how primary schools deliver their science so then we can incorporate that into the way that we do it because it could be when they come to secondary school there's such a huge jump just in the way that things are delivered and that is not good for us it's not good for the learners and all the work that is done at primary we can't lose that because that's the foundation. Yeah, so the Slick Partnership, it provides an opportunity for us to learn from their practice and also to be able to share some of our practice so that we, it's kind of like a two-way street really. We can then feed into to research from the university, we can also use what they've, what they've learned to benefit our students and to benefit our partnership so that we can do the best by everyone and, and just provide a really good experience and education for, for all the students involved. The real success of these clusters and those similar to them across Greater Manchester has been in the way that we have diversified the approach to transition from primary to secondary school. Traditionally this would see youngsters from the primary school attend the secondary school for a day or two in the summer to explore the science department, to maybe do some practical work and just to become familiar with the environment and the possibilities of their new science learning in secondary. This cluster has turned that on its head and we have focused much more significantly on teacher to teacher um, dialogue and collaboration. So we've not necessarily included the youngsters at this point but very much focused on exploring the assets that both primary teachers and secondary teachers can share with each other. The clusters have worked best when the teachers have seen that not only can they learn from each other but they can learn with each other and that's really been the university's role. We've brokered those conversations, we've brought new insights into contemporary practice in the primary science education sector and allowed them both to sort of chew the cud on that really together and look at how that impacts on their own practice. What's been really imperative to the success of this has been the senior leadership team support and involvement from head teachers through to heads of science through to the science subject leaders themselves. The commitment to coming out, possibly two teachers at least from each school, to regular meetings, half day or full day, uh, to share and learn from each other. That's quite an investment from any, any school at this time and that has been the commitment that each and every one of them has put in. In the wider perspective, what has come out of these clusters through the university, the primary school and the secondary school working together is a response to the new government guidance on teacher professional development. That identifies external expert challenge as one of the key things that can enable high quality professional development for teachers in the UK. So our challenge now is to look at the sustainability of these clusters and seeing how feasible it is to continue this kind of primary and secondary teacher dialogue and collaboration in the long term and really thinking and exploring what impact that has on them as teachers but most importantly on children's achievement and attainment in science.